Good morning. How are you doing on this very wet and gloomy Wednesday morning? Um, today I am celebrating my son who turned five today. Um, and I was thinking actually, where is the time gone? But actually it feels right. It feels like he's been on the planet for five years. It feels like I've been a parent for five years. I look like I've been a parent for five years. Um, but we've been celebrating here. And it's really made me very reflective actually, as often birthdays do have that um, two sides of the coin. On one hand, it's such a celebratory moment, but on the other, it does make me really reflective, like what's happened, what's gone on, what have I loved? And um, yeah, obviously you don't wanna make it too melancholic by any means, but um, yeah, it's just, it's such a, a big bag of emotions, let's just say that. I wanted to talk today about a brand new series that I want to launch. Now, this isn't going to be a jazzy, you've got to do this, you've got to be in the game, you've got to be here, there and everywhere at all these times, morning, morning. This is about you and me giving you some, some, some tools, I guess, gentle tools that will help. And there will be some things that I'll talk about and you're like, that's not going to work for me, Nikki. Like, that's not a word that I particularly resonate with. And if that is the case, absolutely ditch it. Do not use it. But there might be some things that you go, do you know what? I'm going to ponder on that whilst I cook my spag bowl tonight. And as I was thinking about the sort of umbrella, I guess, that I want to do this new series on, it's around the word create. And I know myself and really tuning into my own needs at the moment about what I need is I need a bit of a gentle approach you know I think we're all getting to the point of the end of the year and the nights are drawing in and I think we're all quite tired and emotional really um, but the word create is one I come to all the time in fact it's probably one of my top 100 words um, I love it because it really grounds me, it really centers me, it really puts me in a position of options. And when I feel like I have options, when I feel like I have autonomy, when I feel like there is choice, there is a way of, um, oh my goodness, I'm sharing my deepest, darkest secrets here, like when I feel like I can have some sense of control in the situation, it gives me an enormous amount of clarity. And the word create for me, morning, morning, it, it, the word create allows me to think into possibilities. Even though there have been many times in my life where I felt like I haven't been able to control the situation, I felt like everything has, you know, come to a head or it's been stressful. But if I keep coming back to this word of create, and what do I want? And what is going to be useful for me in this moment? It's um, very grounding for me. So today, what I want to ask you is what do you want to create? That's how I guess I want to, to kick things off. Because I don't know if it's because we grew up with game shows or if we grew up um, with uh, bucket lists, you know, there was always those sorts of conversations about all the things that you want, or you maybe go through the Argos catalog at Christmas and you'd be like, I really want this, oh, I'd love some crimpers, I want to do this, this and this. But in those moments, they're quite the big things, you know, so some time, morning, morning, some people might say, I really want to go on safari or I really want to um, take a family trip. I really want to drive across America. You know, those big um, goals or bucket list things, they're not necessarily feasible right now. So what I want to do today is to invite you to strip it back and really think about what do you want to create? What is your measure of success at the moment? What are the things that you really want and that are really going to be useful for you? And again, this is not about Nobel Peace Prizes or Olympic world records, but if it is, absolutely go for it. 
But I think it's about tuning into those smaller things maybe and getting really specific on what those look like. Because what can happen, especially when things feel heavy, when things feel busy, we start just to talk about big emotions like, I feel really busy, I feel really overwhelmed, I feel stuck, I just want to create more money, I just want more time. And these sort of big sweeping statements, oh, I just want to feel happier, I just want to feel more like myself. These big things are really hard to be able to action because unless we do the second layer of sort of peeling it back of an onion and we really go into detail of like what that actually looks like, we're setting ourselves up for failure. And actually, in these moments, we want to set ourselves up for success, don't we? We want to feel like we're at least moving forward, that we're trying to... I don't know, get closer or get more connected or things like that. I certainly had a few epiphanies when I was on holiday at the end of August and we just took some time away. It was all very safe and things like that. But I kept coming back to this question of what do I want to create? And there's a really lovely coaching exercise that I use quite often with my um, clients is this exercise of be, do, have. So this is a really lovely grounding exercise when you get a piece of paper and you can do it as imperfectly as you like. Sometimes you can just, you know, scribble it down on the back of a, you know, a gas bill or something like that when you just need to choose again, when you need to reframe, when you're like, what am I doing? What am I trying to say here? So what you do is you write three columns. The first you write B, the second you write do, and the third you write have. And writing those things down in a however big or however small really allows you to go, what do I want? And this is my first challenge for you as part of this Create series is I want you to write a hundred things down. And already as you go, a hundred? Really? And this can be as small as... I want to have a really lovely lunch for the rest of the week. Like, not just, you know, your bog standard, like, oh, let's see what's in the fridge. I want to create time where I really have a nice lunch. Or I want to have um, a bath at night where I actually use that stuff that's been in the cupboard since last Christmas that somebody gave me and it was too luxurious and I'm like oh when am I going to use that I want you to think about those things and actually commit to the fact that you're important this always makes me very teary because so many of us will put other people first We'll put other people's needs first. Somehow it feels indulgent to be thinking about ourselves, especially at this time, especially with everything that's going on in the world. I mean, we only need like one little shove to be thinking, oh my goodness, I've got to think about somebody else. You know, I should be so grateful in this moment. But you can do both. You can be aware, you can be engaged, you can be charitable, you can be connected, morning, morning. You can be a lovely person but also you can tune into what you actually need as well. And there's things that you can actually action if you get really clear on what that looks like. So for example, before I would have gone, I want a new Mulberry handbag or I want X number of whatever in the bank. I would go for those sort of the snazzy things basically. But when I did this exercise for myself, I really tuned into the fact that at the end of August, when my son was about to start school um, towards the end of September, I was like, I want to be done by three o'clock in the afternoon. And of course, you know, there's work that I do in the evening and things like that. But that window of him starting school from pick up to when he goes to bed, I would like to be really productive, really present, and my goodness, I'm not saying I'm a perfect mother or giving parenting advice or anything like that, please don't get this wrong. But for that first part, I thought that's really important to me. And it wasn't glossy to anybody else. And actually, if you go and pick kids up from school, that's usually the moment. I mean, my son comes out of school 
like he's coming out of a terrible nightclub looking for a taxi. He's so bewildered, he's so tired, um, and I probably don't get the best of him at that moment because, you know, he's had an exhausting day. But that was one of the things that I wrote on that be, do, have list. And so that's what I want to invite you to do today. What do you want to create? What is really important? What keeps coming up for you right now? One of the things, another thing that I was like, I really want to read more. I really want to um, get back into fiction reading. You know, there's nothing like having small children that, you know, I used to read for hours or, you know, I used to read like an hour a night and that doesn't necessarily seem feasible at the moment, but I want to start prioritizing it again. And the reason that I'm doing this is if you feel good, you'll probably do good. If you feel topped up, morning Leanne, if you feel topped up, if you feel good, that ripple effect is going to come with you into the world. It's those moments where you feel centered, where you feel grounded. One of the things that I've been really trying to focus on doing is having a really solid morning routine before my kids wake up. And sometimes that's not possible. Sometimes they're like, hi, I'm right there with you anyway. We're both waking up. I mean, Luna woke up at 4.30 the other day and I wasn't about to go, do you know what? I wish I had set my alarm for 3.30. Oh, you needed a chat, hiya. Um, That, you know, I wasn't gonna go, I'm gonna wake up at 3.30 so I get my morning routine. No, I'm gonna have my sleep when I need it. But asking yourself what you want to create, what's going to feel really good for you right now, starting to put your needs up a little bit, um, it's it's just going to help us kind of going forward. So over the next few days, I'm going to be um, sharing a bit more about these series, about creating and really helping you to tune in to what you want. And One of the things that I've realized from my own experiences is there's been very few things in my life that have suddenly just landed on my lap out of nowhere. I do believe many of the things, the um, I guess the successes or things like that, they have come because I've deliberately thought about how I could make that happen. And I was reflecting today because Oscar is five, like when I thought about having a baby, I really started to think about what that would look like and how I could make space for that. Because six months previous to having him and becoming pregnant, I had no space for it. It wouldn't have been feasible. The situation that I was in, I wouldn't have been able to have a baby. I wouldn't have been able to work. So I'll tell this story another day. Actually, there's a free masterclass on it um, where basically I changed my day rate to my hourly rate and then suddenly I changed my monthly rate to my day rate and I made some big moves so I was able to um, welcome a family into my life and um, that makes that might sound you know a conversation for another time and you know I'm really conscious about talking about fertility in this way because I know a lot of people have a a huge amounts of struggle and so many people close to me have and I'm very very aware of that Um, but that as an example um, of really thinking aside from you know growing a family or having a a baby I had to be really clear about what that looked like in terms of how I was going to make my working situation um, work for me how was I going to make that work so what do you want to create what's on your list what do you want to do write it down that's the first step Give yourself 10 minutes, scribble out a hundred ideas if you can of stuff that you want to do. And it could be really small. It could be huge. It could be like, do you know what? That course that I bought four years ago, I'm actually going to sit down and do it. I'm actually going to take the time or I'm actually going to say to my partner, these are the things that I need or I need help in this area or maybe it's an internal decision. Maybe it's like, actually, I need to stop telling that person about what my plan is because they don't make me feel good. They don't hold space for me. They don't value what I'm all about. They think it's silly. They think it's never going to work. They think that it's a ridiculous time to do X, Y and Z. Yeah. 
Sometimes it's about expansion and sometimes it is about going inwards as well. So I hope that's been useful. If there's anything that you want to message me privately, like I'm going to create space for this um, and you want some accountability with that or you just want a place to put it, um, my DMs are always open. Um, feel free to use those. And um, yeah, I hope you have a lovely day. I'm going to have a big slice of cake today. I cannot believe he's five. And you know what? I feel so grateful because me five years ago, my goodness, I felt like I'd been run over. Um, so he was actually born on a Wednesday. He was born at um, 2.30 in the morning, but my labor had started on the Sunday. So I had all day Sunday, all day Monday, and I finally had some gas and air on the Tuesday afternoon. And um, yeah, it was it was quite the fraught experience, let's just say that. Um, but yeah, hu hugely grateful for, you know, coming out the other side because it could have been a very different story. One note um, as an aside on this, which I always say whenever I talk about, and, and to say, I went on and I had um, Luna and I had a very positive experience with that. Um, if you're listening to this and you're thinking about having a baby or you know somebody who has had a difficult birth experience, there is something called a birth reflection. And this is something that you can ask your midwife if you're having a second or a third or, you know, you know somebody who is um, in that moment. Um, where when I went into hospital, when I was pregnant with Luna, I was having loads of extra checks because of um, the stuff that happened with Oscar um, and they pulled out my notes from my first experience and we went through everything and she told me the order, order of um, consequences, why they did certain things, why and it was so healing, it was so refreshing and it was only because my midwife happened to pick up on the fact that I would really benefited from it. So um, I just wanted to always keep talking about that. If there's a way that you can go back and look at your notes, if you feel like that's something, they keep them, the records are there. So if that would be part of your healing process, um, I just want to always share that as well. Thank you so much for watching, for listening. I look forward to hearing what you create, what you want to be, do and have. And I'm sending you lots of love wherever you're listening. Take care. Bye.